So let's start talking about how we're going to calculate these rates. All right. That's exciting. Now, in the lab, you're just going to use a, an approximate rate. You're just going to uh, time it and then just take one over the time. Uh, in all actuality, there's a little bit more specific calculation we can do. And that will enable us to calculate a rate constant, which we'll see in a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> but first, when we talk about rates, there's actually two rates, okay? Just so we're confusing, okay? So we could talk about the rate of change. So how fast something is changing during the reaction. Okay. All right, and when we talk about that, that rate of change mm, So that rate of change is equal to just the change in concentration. And since we're actually going to look at an example here, we got a hydrogen plus iodine producing two HIs, two highs. Okay. So we can say that the rate of change for hydrogen. So the change in concentration over the change in time. Okay, and they actually give us some values uh, for this. Okay, it looks like they're giving us, they're calculating the rate and change for hydrogen from, you know, it's probably 30 seconds to 70 seconds. And they're saying that the change of concentration is going to be final minus initial. So when it was, you know, a little over 0.2 minus something 0.5-ish. Okay. And that equals negative 0 0.28 molarity. Hmm. That does that. Hmm. All right. Divided by, it would just be 70 minus 30. Right? So that's 40 seconds. So the rate of change for hydrogen is equal to what? What's that equal? Take someone take uh, negative point two eight divided by forty seconds. Negative point zero zero seven. I'm going to do that 40 seconds. We'll say, we'll just keep like that. What are, would be our units for a rate? Molarity per second. Perfect. Okay. Let's calculate the rate of change for um, HI over that same period of time. It's got it queued up over here. So over that same 40 second interval, hydrogen iodide went from 0.8 something to 1.5-ish. It increased by 0.56 over that 40 seconds. So the rate of change for that would equal, so change in concentration over change in time, would equal 0 0.56 molar divided by 40 seconds. No, this is for this experiment. That's the numbers they got. The numbers Tro got for his experiment. 
he did a genetics experiment today too. 0 0.014 and molarity per second. All right, so so these are rates of change. <laughs> and it turns out that the rate of change for any reactant or product is going to could be different. It could be the same, but there it could also be different. Okay? So let's talk about why they're different. Well, one thing that's definitely different is that the rate of change for hydrogen is negative and the rate of change for HI is positive. Why is that? Mm, one's going down, one's going up. That works. Okay, yeah, so the concentration for hydrogen is going down, it's going into something else, HI is going up. What, but, you know, why is hydrogen going down and HI going up? Why? The reacting? Yeah. What is hydrogen? What are the reactants? What is HI? The product. So shouldn't the uh, reactant's concentration go down when they react and start making product? And the product concentration is going to start to go up, right? So yeah, so that, we talked about that yesterday. The concentration change for uh, reactants is always going to be negative because they're going down. They're getting used up. The product is being produced. I wonder if we, that's why we call it the product, because it's being produced. Huh. Never thought about that. It's going to be positive because we're making some of that. So it's going to go up. Its concentration is going to go up. All right. So that's going to be uh, one thing. What do we notice about the actual numerical values of those changes? Double. So why is HI going up twice as much as hydrogen is going down? Response, uh, not yet. The subscripts of hydrogen 2. Yeah, so that's, that's true. And then, so you're on the right track. We need to start looking at numbers, maybe in the equations. One mole of hydrogen produces two moles of the HI. And of course, we've got to balance it because of the subscripts. So yeah, so the coefficients of our balanced chemical equation, the stoichiometric ratio, good old stoichiometry back to say the day again, tells us the ratios of which they're going to increase and decrease, okay? So we're having, I'm pointing all this out because it turns out, as I said, we're going to talk about two rates. One, the rate of reaction, rate of change, and that's just very simply change concentration over change of time. Then we also want to come up with an average rate of the reaction. And that should be, the same no matter what we look at. So we want to come up with a rate for this reaction from any one of our reactants or, con or products, okay? And so we need to fudge these numbers, so no matter what happens, we get the same number, okay? And so when we talk about the average rate, and usually when we're talking about rate, we're using this one, okay? So the rate equation looks something like this, okay? So this is how I uh, will write it on your equation sheet. So this is how I'll write it now. And then I'll explain it to you. That's what's called teaching. Okay. And yes, change in the world. Okay. So what I say is I say plus or minus. Well, first we've got to pretend we're, well, just uh, this is how I write it. Okay. One over A. Lowercase A. Times, I don't know if I have a parentheses. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. Change in concentration of A over change in time. No parentheses. What parentheses were we talking about? I don't see any parentheses. No. It led you astray. <laughs> all right, so what's all this mean? 
So the reason, so I write it as A. So the way to think about it is looking at a, a, uh, an equation where we have A as a reactant or product, and that is its coefficient, the lowercase a. That's its coefficient. Okay. So the plus or minus. What are we going to do with that? Well, if it's a product, we're going to use the plus because products go up in concentration. If it's a reactant, we're going to use the negative. And we're going to multiply by 1 over its coefficient. That way, you know how this 0.014 was twice as high as the 0.007? Well, if I multiply it by 1 over 2, it's coefficient. Oh, we got 0 0.007, right? Bingo, bingo, same number. And so that is its coefficient. And change of concentration over change of time, that's the rate of change. It was a two for that. Get out of here, 30. Yep, the whole thing. There's your parentheses. Okay, so this is a an equation that changes depending on what you're using to calculate the average rate of the reaction. If you use a reactant, you're going to need to multiply by a negative, so you change it to a positive value. If it's a product, it's already positive, so just keep it positive. And then to get the same numerical value for the rate of change, just multiply that by 1 over the coefficient. Okay? Question? Eh, anything. The coefficient of the balanced chemical equation. Let's do an example. Yeah, if it was A, it was A. So let's do a real example. Like example 13.1. Since it's queued up, might as well. All right. So, consider the balanced chemical equation. We're considering it. Okay. We've got H2O2, that's hydrogen peroxide, plus three iodides, plus two H pluses, produce uh, I3 minus ion, and two waters. Hmm. Very interesting reaction to consider. All right, so let's say in the first 10 seconds of the reaction, the concentration of iodide dropped from 1.000 mole to 0 0.868 mole. Calculate the average rate of this reaction in this time interval. So we're going after average rate of this reaction, so that's where we're going to have to bust out this new equation. And we're going to have to build it based on what we're looking at, what we're asking about. So let's do A. All right. So we're going to calculate the average rate, on the rate of this reaction based on iodide. That's whose information we have, right? So our rate is going to equal plus or minus. Which one do we want to use? Plus or minus? Minus? Is iodine a reactant or product? Reactant. Yes, it's a reactant. So we're going to use minus. So minus. Let's rewrite the equation so I can talk about it. So we got rate equals plus or minus 1 over A times the change in concentration. All right, so we're using minus because it's a reactant. Now, 1 over A, 1 over what? Three? Yes, it's one over the coefficient, right? 
And the coefficient for iodine is 3, so it's 1 over 3. Times the change in concentration, so change in concentration of iodide over change in time. All right, so let's calculate this. Just do can't change in concentration all on, on top. So change in concentration, just like change in time, change in enthalpy, change in energy, it's going to be what? Initial minus final? Final minus, no, that's it, yeah, you're right. Final minus initial. So what is my final concentration of iodide? 868, it's dropped two, so 868. What's my initial? One, one, zero, zero. That's a, that's a decimal. And then divided by my change in time, what's my change in time? What's my final time? Ten. Ten. What's my initial? Zero. Zero. So, yeah, it'd be ten seconds. All right, so we're going to take negative one-third times 0.868 minus 1 divided by 10. We're going to put that into our calculator. 5768. I, I knew you were kidding. <laughs> That's funny. 0.256. It shouldn't be negative because this will end up being negative, the subtraction, and then we're multiplying by a negative. Good. A couple more seconds. What do you get? Zero, zero, four, four? Yeah. Now nah, nah, you're holding on, holding on. You're holding that on me before. What are my units? Molarity per second, molar per second. Good. All right. <clears throat> so that's my rate of the reaction. So that's for the whole reaction. And the nice thing about going to that work and calculating the rate for the entire reaction is that you can figure out the rate of change for anything else. Okay? So we can do B. So we can determine the rate rate of change and concentration for H plus during that time interval. Even though we measure, maybe we measured iodine in the lab, got a rate for that, we can figure out how everything else is going to change. So what we do is we need to build the equation again, this time for hydrogen. So for hydrogen, H plus, all right, so we got rate equals plus or minus. Plus? Yep, so it's a reactant. So should we use plus or minus? Minus. Remember, minus for reactants. Because we want to get rid of that negative. All right. 1 over A. What's our A? 2? 2? 2? Okay, 2. times the rate of change. Which is what we're looking for. Okay, so we need to uh, just solve for that. Solve for the change in H plus over change in time. So this is my variable. That's what I'm looking for. So I just need to do a little bit of algebra and then plug in my rate. 
So to get rid of, to get this all by itself, change in H plus over change in time, what should we do? Both, both, both multiply both sides by negative. So now we got negative rate equals one half rate of change. Then what do we got to do? Multiply by two. So then we have negative two times the rate equals change in concentration of H plus, change in time. All right, so I got change in concentration of H plus equals negative two times the rate, which we just calculated, right? What's the rate? 0 0.0044. No, yeah, so it's a it's a during this time interval. Yep. <laughs> and so that's probably gonna give me negative zero point zero zero eight eight molar per second. Yes, I did that in my head. All right, so that's how we calculate rate. Okay, uh, it's it's based on the rate of change, and then if we're talking about the overall reaction, the average rate of reaction, multiply by one over its coefficient, multiply by a plus if it's a product to keep it positive, and multiply by a negative if it's reacting to make it positive. 